Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Um, we're going to be looking at part six of similar to nine. Yeah, we're going to cover number 64 through number 96 in this section. So almost 30 verses we're going to cover in this section. And we're going to we're going to finally finalize the tower. We're going to get it all built up with these different various stones and stuff. We're going to get it polished and washed down in this section. Yeah, we're going to do a little brief explanation of each of the stones, the black ones, the rough ones, the black and white ones in this session. All right, and we're going to also, as always, guys, we're going to show you how this played out in our life, give you some real-life examples as we go. So you guys be prepared to comment. Go ahead and hit that like button. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about yourself. If you read Hermas, you know, add to it. Um, if you studied it, uh, we're in this to help each other. Yeah, and you guys are examples, too. We aren't the only ones living this out, so go ahead and give your testimony as far as how this plays out in your life as we go. And first of all, we began to consider those which had been black, for they were found just such as they were when they were pulled out of the tower. Wherefore he commanded them to be removed from the tower and put by themselves. This is the shepherd of Hermas and Hermas himself about to come back and, and do an inspection of the tower. But now, so he's looking at the ones that are black, found uh, black in the tower. And of course, these are going to be the blasphemous guys. These are going to be the apostates who have gone as far as blaspheming. And they're not going to be allowed into the tower. Number 65. Okay. Then he examined those which had been rough and commanded many of those to be cut round and to be fitted by the virgins into the building of the tower. So they took them and fitted them into the middle of the building and he commanded the rest to be laid by with the black ones for they also were became black. Now these rough individuals, these are individuals that are described as being hard learners, people who believe that they know the truth but are not willing to um, um, accept the truth, especially from other individuals. And you see a lot of these people, you know, they did turn black, they, they became evil and blasphemous, but a lot of them changed their colors and they were allowed to go into the middle of the tower. Number 66. Next he considered those which were full of cracks, and many of those also he ordered to be parred away, and so to be added to the rest of the building by the same virgins. Now these cracks and um, clefts, and these are people that have things against one another. People that have problems with each other, whether it be jealous, jealousy or envy or backbiting or different stuff like that. You remember he said the ones with the small cracks, uh, the small clevises, those those people um, usually turn a uh, hole. They lost their cracks and was able to go into the tower. But you had those who had big cracks who would who would not stop backbiting and stop doing stuff that ended up um, perishing, ended up being kicked far away from the tower. Yeah, these are the ones that have discord against their brothers and sisters. Not you know talking about family, uh, but I'm talking about uh, the uh, saints of the Most High. Uh, they're the ones who are. Um, always causing trouble, always uh, there's backbiting and things like that uh, between each other. Slandering and different stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, I think this is talked about in the Tenth Commandments, how we're not supposed to have all or lie on our brothers and sisters. So. Well, it's not always lies. Sometimes, you know, even the truth can be a little bit slanderous but in an in opportune time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Number 67. These were placed without because they were found entire, but the residue through the multitude of their cracks could not be reformed, and therefore were cast away from the building of the tower. Yeah, the, and notice the pattern here. You can tell some people are given chances to dwell in the, in the tower while other people aren't. And these ones that he's talking about are the ones who, who are um, able to be in the tower, um, um, Remember when we looking at the uh, when we were looking at drawing it out, it was the rough, the cleft, and the white and round stones that uh, were are going to be given another chance, whereas the rest of them are going to be kicked too far away from the tower to have a true chance. So some are given a chance and others are not. Why is, why are well, others were, not? They were given a chance. I shouldn't have said it like that. They were given a chance at first. We all were when you know um, they were at. at 
going back to the whole rods out of similar to eight, we were all given the law and we were all given the chance to correct our rod. Right. It's just that some of us were too hard and, and, you know, we weren't really able to be corrected. I guess it has a lot to do with repentance. Yeah, it's everything to do with repentance, you're right. Yeah, because you have to get in that repentant heart or it's, it's, no matter what you try to do, it's going to fail. Number 68. Then he considered those that had been maimed. Many of these had cracks and were become black. Others had large clefts. These he commanded to be placed with those that were rejected. Now we get this information from all over the book. And Stacy and I have been chasing it, you know, down. If the main stones, we found out these are people who still have wickedness in their heart. And, you know, my understanding of this, these would, you know, be people who who want to otherwise, you know, call themselves servants of God, but, you know, they want to hold on to their wickedness and they, they want to still do that sinful stuff that they like to do. Well, once they get struck with this rod, some of them um, develop cracks, meaning they get slanderous against their brother. You know, they, they want to start talking about each other instead of correcting their own issues. They say, well, hey, look at, you know, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug and how much lying and stuff he's doing and blah, blah, blah. And so they, they end, their cracks end up getting um, even worse and become chips, whereas actually them broke off and lost part of you know, who they are or whatever. Um, this reminds me of, um, I think it says in commands, it might be similar to this, where it says that it's better to have um, not known the Father, the Word, than to have known it. Because once you know it, then you're expected to, uh, to bring yourself up. Yeah, definitely. Anybody who, who understands the, the Father is expected to do uh, righteously. But back to those main stones, some of them, you know, they developed cracks, so they started, they, get, they became slanderous. Other ones became black, which means they start, they became blasphemous. These are other people who, like I said, they, they're maimed. They want to, they want to be righteous, um, but they still have the wickedness in their heart, you know, so you can see what happens to these people. I just think it's real interesting. You can actually watch the maimed, the maimed person, you know, who gets whacked, develop cracks, or turn black, or get clefts, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you look at real life, and you see that that, you know, that's what exactly was happening. Mm -hmm. But the rest being cleansed and reformed, he commanded to be put into the building. These, therefore, those virgins took up and fitted into the middle of the building because they were but weak. Yeah, so these individuals, the maimed individuals, um, at best, they're going to be in the middle of the tower. You know, they're not going to make up the, the, the walls of the tower. And it's because, you know, you think of that wickedness. They really just didn't want to get rid of that whatever it was, that wickedness, you know, whatever it was. Whether, you know, it's disobedience, whether it's, you know, the cleanliness laws that they were struggling with, or whatever it was, they just, you know, maybe they like the wicked women, they like the slant, they like um, anger or, or, or hatred or something, but they just could not get rid of it till the very end. And even the ones who did manage to make it into the tower were so small that, you know, they just made up the bits and pieces on the inside. So it's a matter of time. So they took, they did get rid of it. It's just that it took longer. And so they, they were, um, they're now in the middle instead of being one of the supporting beings. Right, yeah. Yeah. For a lot of these, the, uh, repenting quickly is very important. Number 70. After these, he examined those which were found half white and half black. And many of those which were now black, these also he ordered to be laid among those that were cast away. You could compare these to the ones um, in the rods who were um, uh, some were uh, half dry, some were green, and but half dry. These are these are going to be doubtful individuals, individuals who you know um, have the Lord on their lips but have doubt in their heart, kind of thing. Number seventy-one. The rest were found altogether white. Those were taken up by the virgins and fitted into the same tower, and they were put in the outside because they were found entire, that so they might keep in those that were placed in the middle, for nothing was cut off from them. So you got to remember who you're talking about. These are individuals, like I said, that they, they um, have faith, 
they have faith in the Father. It's just that they have material uh, riches that is clouding their minds and maybe getting in, in their way. Once they're struck with the rod, that's why you're going to find a lot of these will remain strong enough to be on the outside of the tower because you know it's only it's the only it's not really wickedness that's getting in their way as much it is as much as it is their material possessions. And you know they've lost their they're going you're going to lose the possessions anyway, regardless of whether you are going to turn wicked or righteous or whatever. And so when these people were left with nothing, their faithfulness stayed intact. And so they ended up being strong stones on the outside of the tower. It says also because they were found entire, so they might keep in those that were placed in the middle. Yeah, their, strong, their faith was stronger than their uh, desire for that material stuff. Right. Number 72. Next we looked upon those which had been hard and sharp. But few of these were made use of because they could not be cut, for they were found very hard, but the rest were formed and fitted by the virgins into the middle of the building because they were more weak. So one of the things about sharp is they agree not with one another. This, this tends to mean that they have flaws and errors. 73. Then he considered those which had spots. Of these a few were found black, and they were carried to their fellows. The rest were white and entire, and they were fitted by the virgins into the building and placed in the outside by reason of their strength. Now, these are uh, the ones who uh, have spots and stains. These are the wicked ministers. These are the ministers who are profiting off the ministry or, you know, uh, taking advantage of people or not really, you know, uh, pushing the truth as they should be. And some of them will, will turn blasphemous once they're struck with that rod. They, you know, and start to lose their possessions or whatever. Some of these will become blasphemous. They'll say stuff like the Lord did this to me and, and God did this to me. And, you know, and it, it, that's blasphemy when it boils down to it, because our father is not doing anything, you know, harmful to us. It is us doing harmful stuff to ourselves and blaming him for it. And, you know, and, you know, some of them will be just become black because of they, they start to miss their stuff. But a lot of them will become white. These are ministries. These are people who have been, you know, working for the Father. And when truth starts to take over, they'll, 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 they'll lock on to it and become white. I'm surprised by that. Surprised by what? I'm surprised by that some of them will become white and will be placed on the outside, like, for supporting uh, beings because of, the, it says, because of their strength. Well, yeah, it's just errors. You you have to understand that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is not a bad guy. He did not get in the ministry to lie and take advantage of people. <laughs> it's just part of it's, it's 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 a part of the way the world works. For the for the most part, it is the it is the the um, the people going to church that is taking advantage of it. It's like they find somebody that will lie to them and tell them a lie, and then they start promoting that person. I'll say for, for, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I would say that the, um, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctors of old time, those maybe uh, of new times, you know, you go on YouTube now and they're blatant out. Uh, these young guys are, you know, in it for the money and that's what they want and they're not uh, uh, hesitant to tell you that that's what they want. Uh, so you know, but I guess. and some of them and some of them will turn black. But you got that's just a few. That's not all of them. Right. Some of them, you know, some of them are just a little bit ignorant right now. And but and and my, my what I believe is is when they are approached by the truth, they will go with the truth. It's just you know maybe it, they maybe a little hard to get the truth in sometimes over all of their material possessions. Okay, seventy four. After this, he came to consider those stones which were white and round. And he said unto me, What shall we do with these stones? I answered, Sir, I cannot tell. The white and the round individuals are the majority of us. We was at one point, we were white and round before we were struck with the rod. These are individuals who who are... Um, who have no 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 gal no no deceit they're not doing anything they, they're making errors because they have a lot of riches that is clouding their thinking and clouding their interpretation of the law and what they're actually supposed to be doing in order to please the father they have a lot of riches and a, and a little bit of wealth and it's clouding their mind but otherwise they are good and you know good people 
good, they're just good people making mistakes. It's who these guys that are white and round. And all he's going to do is he's going to cut the roundness part off, which is their riches, and then he's going to leave them square. That's what we're going to find out. 75. He replied, Canst thou think of nothing then for these? I answered, Sir, I understand not this art, neither am I a stone cutter, nor can I tell anything. Yeah, so the um, the angel is he's kind of teasing him a little bit. He, he knows he doesn't really know. But the thing is, it's just so many of them. And he's kind of pointing and he said, what do you think about all of these stones? You know, it, this is the majority of the stones that you're going to see. It's, it's these white and brown ones. You know, they're brilliant. They're, they're, they're shining. And he's, you know, kind of, you know, um, um, uh, kidding with, with Hermes a little bit here. And he said, seest thou not? that they are very round now to make them square i must cut off a great deal from them how be it it is necessary that some of these should go into the building of the tower yeah see like i said these are these are the majority of who you consider christians um the you know like like your sister my sister these are guys who you know, they listen to gospel radio 24 hours a day. They go to church three or four times a week. They teach in, in they teach church classes or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they have no idea about where the covenant is at or what it means. You know, they, they don't really believe, you know, that they're supposed to even keep the Ten Commandments half the time or whatever. They, they, you know, because they've gone for that. Uh, a lot of them has gone for that story that Jesus did away with their sins. And right. so they can do whatever they want kind of deal. It's, it's, but... Under that misunderstanding, you have good people, and that's what and that's what this that's what he's talking about. He's going to pair some of that, that roundness away from them, so that we'll find out that they are in fact good people. I answered, "If it be necessary, why do you perplex yourself and not rather choose? If you have any choice among you, I answered, "If it be necessary, why do you perplex yourself?" and not rather choose if you have any choice among them and fit them into the building all right so Herman's basically got something to say back so he can keep the keep the story going tell him just just start choosing just start picking them and pick you know grab one and see what you can do with it upon this he chose out the largest and brightest and squared them which had which when he had done, the virgins took them up and fitted them into the building. So these individuals, they're, they're large in that they're, they're faithful. They, you know, they have a lot of faith. They have good deeds. They, they, they are strong people. Um, whereas the opposite would be somebody who is doubtful or maybe has clefts or cracks, maybe slanders. They'll turn out to be really small. So he's, he's grabbing the best people and then he's chiseling off certain elements of them just to make them, you know, into into uh, squares. And then he's going to fit them into the tower on what did he say on the how did he say on the outside or the inside? Did he make a difference? Uh, he said fitted them into the building. So. I don't know if that's the middle or the outside. And it sounds like it's in the middle, but we'll see. Go ahead. 79. And the rest that remained were carried back into the same field from which they were taken. Howbeit they were not cast away, because he said, There is yet a little wanting to this tower which is to be built. And perhaps the Lord will have these stones fitted into this building, because they are exceeding white. Now, you want to have some type of chronology going on. I keep mentioning this, um, that this actually tells us how the tribulation is going to work and even, you know, when certain elements are going to take place in here. What he's talking about here points back to what, to um, periods in, in, in even your life when your riches were paired away. And if you remember correctly, there was a lot of people that who, who would have been white and round stones whose riches were paired away at the same time that I was. I mean, there was a lot of people even at my at my job place that, you know, were in the same boat that I was. And, I, I, you know, we, we used to talk all the time at lunch, so I knew that they were very faithful people. And their riches were paired away at the same time my, mine was. The thing about it, a lot of these individuals, you know, um, at least one of them, I know he even tried to, to you know, take the same path that I took as far as you know becoming off grid and all of this but a lot of those guys they ended up going back into the workforce and that's what he's talking about here when when he said that they're taken back to where they came from 
and because they're going to get it, be given another chance. Mm. So those people ended up back down there at the jobs, back down there working um, for the man until um, later on when they'll have another op, they'll be they're going to be paired again, you know. And and so they they um, but they still will be except they still will have a chance to get into the tower, just you know a little bit down the road. And like I said, they're going to have to be paired again. So do you have to be um cut away pair until you get it right yeah this tower has to be perfected you got to remember what's at stake here there cannot be any flaws in the tower or it may cause the whole tower to crumble it may cause the whole thing to fall down if you have one rock who you thought was a very solid rock making you know close to the foundation you know outside of this tower and you got to remember the father he doesn't have to do that First of all, he can find other stones to replace us. You know, there's plenty of people who want to be in this tower. He, he doesn't have to, you know, settle for, you know, junk or whatever. And even if they don't make it into the tower this time, you know, they will, they, they, they will have the chance to be reincarnated and have another chance to get in the tower. I was going to say, on. I was going to say that uh, I guess time is important. Like we were saying before, because if they don't, um, because there will be a time when the tower is built, right? And time is up. Will um, there be a time up? No um, more no more stones to be put into the building? For the tower. The tower itself is for people to make it over into the, in, in, into the next level, so to speak. Um, but the thing is, um, when, when you understand the eschatology, um, the, at one point, the whole planet goes up into flames. It's actually the whole thing gets burnt up. And when you read the Third Testament, it tells you it's at that point that we will all be where we are supposed to be. Um, there, you know, he, all of the people in the spirit world who would have been, you know, um, purified and given the opportunity to live purified lives, giving us all the chance to go to the next level. So, not everybody's going to get into the tower for this tribulation not everybody's going to become the parents of humanity going into the millennial age but they'll still be born as our children still be born as their children I, I'm speaking like I know I'm gonna make it or whatever <laughs> but they still will be born it will still be born you know back into society and we'll still go on to the higher mansions Okay. We're not going to be left behind. We're not going to be in some hell place tormented for forever, like right. you know the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug wants to tell us. You know, we will all be saved eventually. Then there were called twelve very stately women, clothed with a black garment, girdled, and their shoulders free, and their hair loose. These seem to me to be country women. Uh, uh, country women. Oh. Um, hey. Huh. Oh. But these are these are the um, the opposite powers. We've heard a lot about the virgins, but these uh, these women here, these are the stately women. These are um, he never really calls them virgins women. He calls them ladies or whatever. But these are, he's calling women. He says their hair is loose, um, their shoulders are free. They they are wearing black garments, and you know. I guess you would think uh, when you think of. Um, city people, you think of proper, you think of sophistication, you think of uh, trendy, uh, like that. But when you think, and when you think of country women, you think of, uh, um, I don't know, rough, rough, tumble, yeah, tomboyish. tomboys. You think of laid back. You think of, you, you know, grain of straw in the mouth. Let them I don't know about that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't describing you all. Yeah. Oh, let's get up out of here. <laughs> Number 81. And the shepherd commanded them to take up those stones which were cast out of the building and carry them back to the mountains of which they were taken. Okay, now what's going on here, we, we, we're given the opportunity through our repentance to come into the tower but for some reason we don't accept the repentance or we, we somehow don't get right. But it's the, these women here um, that's going to take us back to the place that we came from. Literally. I mean, sure, you're talking about the place that we came from is, is hate land 
or selfish land or impatient land. But these women are literally going to grab us and drag us back there. And I tell you guys, I have felt that. I know what that feels like. I, I felt it. And it ain't nothing much you can do about it either. Do, when, you, hmm? do we want to name them again? So you have perfidiciousness, incontinence, infidelity, pleasure, sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. Yeah, and you say that these women, you have felt the hands of these women pulling you back to um, the mountain. Yeah, well, and you know, especially ones like anger. Anger has, has been the, the one, and basically what it, what it is, is what it feels like is, you know, I'm sitting there minding my own self business, and then here comes anger knocking at my door. She, she's knocking at my door saying, hey, I want to spend some time with you. And I'm looking at her all lusty-eyed at her, and I decide to let her into my house, you know. And when she comes into my house, she starts to take over my house to the point where she, next thing you know, she's grabbed, she's, grabbed, she's grabbed a hold of me. And now she is dragging me back to anger land. Would this have anything to do with when, you know, when the Messiah said that, uh, you know about the spirits. So several more spirits are coming to you, or is like that. You know what I'm talking it's, about. It's, that. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's that we in this era, the era that we live in, because of the situation that we find ourselves in, this late in the game, humanity is controlled by these powers. All of these beings that you see on this on this board here, you got twelve good ones and twelve bad ones, but these are actually who control humanity. These are the these are the powers that he talked about when he said you fight against principalities and powers. These are the powers, mm -hmm. yeah. and they control us. They 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 actually do control us nowadays. Yeah, they do. I'm sitting here looking at them, and yeah, yeah, they do. They From control. the time you get up till the time you 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 go to sleep and in your dreams, they are they are controlling us. Now this won't go forever. They don't control us forever. They after after the tribulation, they're no longer in control of humanity. That's one of the things that changes in the tribulation. That's what it means by Satan is being locked up. You know, all of this right here goes away. This is Satan being locked up where there's no more of these wicked elements on the planet controlling man anymore. Hmm. And so for one thousand years we got to be to deal without these women at all. Hmm. And but right now they are controlling us. They control our minds, even you know, um, beyond our will. And it the reason why is because of the reason why they are in control of us is because of all of the merits and stuff that we have to gain, and plus what's what, what's going on in with these mountains and the choosing of this tower and all of that. That they actually controlling us. They making us do stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people who will say, you know, oh, you know, you 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 just blaming them, you blaming them powers because you don't know them. They actually control people. They control people. Principalities. They control governments. They control schools and 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 you know, big corporations and different stuff. Number eighty-two. And they took them all up joyfully and carried them back to their places from whence they had been taken. Yeah, that's the thing about these country women, boy. They have no problem grabbing you and taking you back. Unlike unlike the uh, 12 virgins who are kind of meek and kind of shy, these women just going to grab you. They got lassos. They got whips and stuff. <laughs> they go, yeah, you, and you can't get out of their hands. You can scream, fight, do whatever you want, and they're going to they gonna drag you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When not one stone remained about the tower, he said unto me, Let us go about this tower and see whether anything be wanting to it. Alright, so now they've gotten everything sorted out. You've gotten the... the um, Stones the, placed. you got the stones placed in the tower. You know, he's starting to get rid of the ones that are just not going to do right. They can't do right. Stones have been taken back to the places where they came from. Now they're going to start cleaning the tower up and getting it, getting it perfect. We began, therefore, to go round about it. And when he saw that it was handsomely built, he began to be very glad, for it was so beautifully framed that anyone that had seen it must have been in love with the building. Now, I just, I, we ended up probably end up doing this class all again because I'm really interested to pull out a lot more of this uh, chronology of what's going on here. But now you have a period of time where the tower is built, and the tower is is um, 
is ready, ready, almost ready for inspecting. They got a little bit of cleanup to do, but yet there's still some more stuff that has to go in into the tower. Yeah, I it's very helpful to me uh, when you do, you know, pull out the chronology of it and and it show it show how it's fitting in with today's uh today's time. Yeah. Yeah. Number eighty five. For it seemed to be all but one stone, nor did a joint anywhere appear, but it looked as if it had all been cut out of one rock. Yeah, and that's what what that's talking about. You got to remember what the very fir first rock is. We find out somewhere in this book um, that the uh, rock itself is the word of God. So that's the initial foundation. And then you have all of these stones and stuff that are placed on it, including Yahushua HaMashiach himself. He, he's laid down, you know, as the, the, the first individual there. Um, when it says that they're, that they're consistent and, and appears to be as if it came from one stone, we're talking about people being consistent with, with the scripture, consistent with the word of God. There's no outliers, there's no mistruths, there's nothing taken away from the scripture. Everything is lined up, you know, perfectly. The word of God is is perfect in this tower. No errors. Number 86. And when I diligently considered what a tower it was, I was extremely pleased. And he said unto me, Bring here some lime and little shells, that I may fill up the spaces of those stones that were taken out of the building and put in again. For all things about this tower must be made even. Remember, they had to be pared away. You know, so he took them out and then he had to start chiseling on them and put them back to where they would actually fit in. But some of these are going to have little chips. Some of these are going to have little, you know, little, little bitty areas that's got to be filled in. And these turns out it's going to be our sins and stuff. Bring um, hither some lime and little shells. I wonder what that is. That's the, that's the filler that's going to fill in for, for our, for our uh, lameness, for those little chips and stuff, you know. Um, like I said, just imagine uh, uh, if you was to start chipping on a rock, you're not going to get it perfectly square, right? Especially when it started off, the, the rock started off square in the first place when it was found in the tower. Then when it was struck by the rod, it was actually removed from the tower. And then he started chiseling on the, on the stone and then he put it back. Well, those parts that he chiseled off, stuff like, you know, um, the parts that he chiseled off are now what's being filled in. Right, okay. Smoothing mm -hmm. it out. Mm hmm yeah. And I did as he commanded me, and brought them unto him, and he said unto me, Be ready to help me, and this work will quickly be finished. Um, all right, go ahead. 88. He therefore filled up the spaces of those stones, and commanded the place about the tower to be cleansed. All right, so now he smoothed them out. You know, these... He, he, the stones, like I said, they're, they're not perfect because, you know, they, we're talking about stones here. And, you know, he's having to work with these stones and chisel them and different stuff like that. But the, the, the same way you was to take um, some plaster or something and smooth it down, put some grout on it and smooth it down. That's, that's what's going on here. And that's what's making the uh, tower um, appear to have been made out of one stone. Number 89. Stucco, what is that stucco they put on it? Uh, yeah, stucco is kind of joint compound stuff, yeah. Number 89. Then those virgins took besoms and cleansed all the place around and took away all the rubbish and threw water on, which being done, the place became delightful and the tower beauteous. Yeah, so now... What this this is part of the chronology here. This is significant here, but I don't really know what's going on when they are actually cleansing this tower. Um, I'm, I'm sure that part up there where he was filling in those spaces too has you know more is is actually going to be a period in time where mm -hmm. we can point to and say you know um, that these when this, when the, when the, but this is when the cracks were filled in. However, maybe we are going through to something like that now and we can't really see it until you know later on we'll look back in hindsight but you know that filling in the spaces is significant and the fact that the virgins are cleansing the area around is significant too that could be the tribulation 
It very well could be the tribulation. It could be the the troubles during the tribulation because you have to remember after the tribulation, that's when the only thing that will be left is the tower. Everything else will be wiped away. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, going into the tribulation is going to be a mess, right? You got all kinds of stones and rocks about the tower and around the tower. Yeah. After the tower, the tribulation is going to. Be, uh, after the tribulation, the tower is going to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put my little engineering hat on and, you know, trying to convolute some mathematical equation to help me make some of this stuff make sense. But I believe the cleansing, this part right here that we're talking about in verse 89, is, is the tribulation itself. Then he said unto me, All is now clean. If the Lord should come to finish the tower, he will find nothing whereby to complain of us. Except this part right here where the Lord is coming to inspect the tower. That kind of blows everything I said up a few minutes ago. Because the, the, the Father is we're still waiting for a return of some type. He he does have a, a final return to the earth. And that is at the sixth seal. After the sixth seal there is no more... There is no more return. He is here. He becomes king of the planet. He doesn't really leave, you know, for until all of us leave the next time when the Rubu show up, the Biru shows up or whatever. He he um <clears throat> he, he he is back. There is no more return that we're waiting for. But in here is what he's talking about. He's waiting for a another another return. Mm -hmm. So maybe now I'm, I'm trying to, you know, make some of this stuff up. You guys can help out in the comments or whatever. But maybe the tower is complete right before the tribulation. And then now what he's talking about is that seventh seal. When that seventh seal, that, that inspection that we'll get at the seventh seal. Okay. I don't know. This, this, this is a complicated book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number 91. When he has said this. He would have departed, but I laid hold on his bag and began to entreat him for the Lord's sake, that he would explain to me all things that he had shown me. Okay, so now we have the vision. We have the idea of what is going on. And so now he's going to start to break down some of this stuff here. Um, Where, where, where are we at as far as paragraph marks? We're on uh, another paragraph mark is on 96. Okay. So we'll go on to 96. Where are we at now? 92. He said unto me, I have at present a little business, but I will suddenly explain all things unto thee. Tarry here for me till I come. Yeah, you got to you got to come back and do another class on this on the chronology of this, I believe. Yeah, because he's 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 about to go away here. There's going to be a period of time where the the tower seems to be complete, but it's left alone here. He says that he's going away to handle some business for a little while. And the, comp the, the sophisticated thing about this book is if somebody really wanted to find out what he meant, they can actually find out what he meant. What business did URL go take care of? It says that, you know, that I will, I have a little business. And I will suddenly explain things unto you, Terry Hilton. So there's going to be a time when... To me, they're saying that there is going to be a time where you cannot repent. Is that what it's saying? Um, yeah, because if, he, yeah, I believe you're right. This in this portion where the tower is is sitting there, it's been swept, it's been cleaned. No stones are going to be allowed in. The building is stopped. You know, so re repentance is not really afforded to you know humanity during this time. But when is this time? Is it past, present, or future? It seems like it says something about that in Third Testament, but I can't remember where there's going to be a time where you can't repent. I don't. I don't. Know. Um. The there's a half hour in in the Revelations okay. that says that heaven will be sh will be closed, okay. and the Third Testament goes on to explain that 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 it is during that time that heaven is closed that we will that our prayers will not be answered, our repentance will not be accepted. Right, he says that it's it's, it's go, because it's going to take that unified voice of humanity crying out for him at one time to you know get the necessary results, and so yeah, it, that could be a very well be it. Okay, ninety three. I said unto him, Sir, what shall I do here alone? He answered, Thou art not alone, seeing all the virgins are with thee. 
All right, so Hermes is about to be left there with the tower, him and the virgins. And I don't think it's significant that Hermes is left there with the tower. You know, I don't see Hermes as any type of figure, any except rep. But he just represents us, regular, regular old man. There's nothing, you know, special about him being left there with the tower. But I think what's going to happen here is he's just going to get an introduction to the virgins and who they are. Ninety-four. I said, sir. Deliver me then unto them. Then he called them and said unto them, I command this man unto you until I shall come. Now, good thing we got to point out again, it, the odd thing about this book is Hermes is actually seeing these individuals. Mm -hmm. He's not in a vision. He's not in a trance or anything. He's actually seeing some being there walking around this tower who represents, you know, these 12 virgins or whatever. Okay, so 95, and this is the last one for this session. So I remain with those virgins. Now they were cheerful and courteous unto me, especially the four, which seemed to be the chiefest among them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to remember that it is um, uh, the first four who are the chiefest. People like uh, patience, power, continence, and faith, with faith being the strongest ones. And so it is these women who are going to, you know, start to embrace Herman, start to come up and talk to him. I think uh, Faith is going to give him a big kiss and thing, big kiss or whatever. And then the rest of them are going to come and, you know, entertain Herman and take care of him until the shepherd returns. All right. Is that going to do it for that? Yeah, this here one, like I said, I think is really going to be helpful if you were, are able to take time to do a chronology on this. All right, y'all. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Um, we'll pick up on uh, verse number 96 here shortly. If you this is your first class, go ahead and check out the uh, first classes that we've done on Similitude 9. Um, this is the last similar two. We have covered all of the rest. You can check our channel for those two. I should be putting up a card for you to take a look at. Go ahead and um, hit the like button if you got something out of it. Yeah, and comment. Yeah, and leave a comment. Um, guys, we don't know everything. You know, um, we don't come across as, as teachers of everything. This is actually just a Bible study here. You know, with us trying to understand too. So feel free to add your elements to it. You guys have information that you can add to help this uh, collaborative study work out. So feel free to go ahead and put your comments below so we can all learn from you as well. Yeah, introduce yourself and let us know if you have read or have studied uh, The Shepherd of Hermes. Um, and, you know, put your thoughts into it and we all learn from each other. Yep. And that's that on that. Shalom.